Do you want to know how to paint, detail, and add sound to your in-scale locomotives? Why don't you stick around and watch this segment, see how we did on my in-scale model rare, this AR secondary. <laughs> Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale. Welcome back to the Locomotive Shop. So this time on the Locomotive Shop, we're gonna be working on that GP40-2 that I told you about last time. Okay, so the model that we're working with this project is gonna be an Atlas GP40-2. Now I know I spoke about it last time. Uh, it was numbered 5278. And my concern was that there was nothing in the Conrail uh, roster of that number. The closest thing would be in the RS3M series. So no, somebody commented that uh, 5278 was a Norfolk no, uh, Southern number, um, and I, I looked it up and it was a GP38-2. So what I believe was going on is that somebody had purchased it as an unnumbered unit and was trying to do a Conrail patch out. So I talked about it in the comments. So if you look at all the prototype photos, the way that Conrail was patching out the locomotives for the split would be that the um, NS units would have had the white uh, block with the black lettering and then the CSX units would have had the uh, just the plain blue with their uh, CSX gold numbering on the cab. So I just think that somebody was try trying to make an attempt at doing a patch job and it was probably just their early attempt. So uh, yeah, so anyway that that really doesn't fit into the scheme. I wanted to get rid of the Conrail uh, quality logo so I made the determination it's going to be a strip and repaint. And the other thing is uh, I'm going to be putting my last uh, 73100 ESU board in this to give it some sound. And uh, then we'll do some detailing and some weathering. All right, so just to refresh everybody's memory, uh, the GP40-2 was an electromotive division product. Uh, it was a four-axle locomotive. It produced 3,000 horsepower. And it had the 645E prime mover. Uh, there was approximately 1,143 units built uh, between the years of 1972 to 1986. So I, this is my little retraction. Uh, I misspoke last locomotive shop. Uh, when it comes to the Dash 2 series in the uh, EMD product line, the Dash 2 is more of a uh, uh, modular electronic components. Uh, they were easily changed out uh, to, for repairs, not a mi microprocessor. Microprocessors didn't come in until the uh, d uh, Dash 3 line. So Conrail had a very extensive roster of the GP40-2. It was pretty prolific uh, when it comes to rail fanning. Um, they were pretty much everywhere all over the system. They were used in mainline service for fast freight, such as uh, light loads like intermodal. Um, and then they were also used in branch line service. So I think it's a great representation to have GP40-2s uh, here on the layout. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, get this one ready to get it out. So because this unit doesn't have any numbers on it, uh, essentially no numbers. Uh, I'm, I delved into the Conrail Historical Society and started looking for a suitable number and uh, I came across the picture that I really liked and it was 3342. Um, this unit, it looked like it was, uh, it, it, the pictures I saw in 1982, it looked like it was in very good shape, had some uh, a good paint scheme and very little weathering. Uh, looked like it had, you know, held its age really well. So we're going to go ahead and go with 3342 and it's just going to be a light weathering job. Okay, so now that we got all the data out of the way, let's get into the video. Uh, watch it and enjoy and I'll talk to you afterwards. Okay, so the video starts off here. We've already disassembled and stripped the paint off the shell. And now we're a day later after washing off the uh, shell, uh, we're in the paint booth and we're gonna use Model Flex Primer Gray to uh, spray everything down. that primer set up overnight and then we're gonna come back the next day and we're gonna use uh, model flex conrail blue and uh, just paint everything up
So I made the determination that since the uh, handrails were already off, just keep them off to install the decals. And uh, yeah, I don't know why I haven't been doing that more in the, uh, my previous projects because the decals were a lot easier uh, this way. fan of the uh, micro scale, uh, micro saw, and micro set. It really helps the uh, decals look better. Okay, so here we are getting ready to start installing the uh, 73100 uh, sound decoder. Um, we're going to solder on the uh, the leads they give you to the speaker, then we'll solder to the board. Um, I'm not going to be installing the LED headlight because I've started using function 5 and there's a built-in LED already on the board and that really works out really good for uh, the headlights. using a piece of uh, 040 plastic for the speaker box. Um, it works out really good, gets good sound production, and doesn't take up a whole lot of room. I did have to trim the rear headlight to make everything fit uh, when I was reassembling the chassis. So now we're just going to darken in all the fan grates and grills uh, with Tamiya panel line paint. Alright, so now we're in the spray booth doing weathering. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, coat the whole shell with uh, Model Flex sand to kind of blend everything together and tone it down. Then we're going to come back with a 50 50 mix of grimy black and rail brown. And I'm just going off the pictures of 3342 and trying to emulate the weathering just like the picture. with the way that the grills and fans were looking so I came in with some uh, weathering powders to kind of just blend it all in because it, it looked like I painted them so I'm just coming in there with those and then I'll seal it up with some testers dull coat Now I'm just carefully spraying the trucks and the tanks with my 50-50 mix and uh, just to weather them up and make them look good. And here's the finished product.
Okay, so we head over to the computer to start programming the soundboard. Um, so I'm going to use my bookmark and go right to the ESU website. I'm going to search for GP40-2 and scroll down through the list and pick the version that I want. You'll see that I'm looking through all the available options on this version. Then I'm going to click download and select the proper soundboard and download the file. So once the file downloads, I'm going to open it up and it opens directly into the low programming software. Um, I'm going to add my cab number that I want, select a long address, and then I'm going to select the download sound files and it takes about 30 minutes. Okay, so there you go. That's how we did it. Uh, yeah, that was fun. Uh, came out really good. Very happy with it. Um, I was very, very apprehensive about the uh, ESU board considering my track record. And uh, lo and behold, uh, went in really well, operated really good. Um, I hope you guys enjoy that, that clip scene uh, of uh, doing the programming for it, just showing you how to use the low programmer. So, you know, when I was doing my research, um, most of the photographs that I saw were from the engineer's side. So, um, I stumbled across the picture that came from the uh, conductor side of 3342 and uh, to my surprise um, there was a cab vent. So uh, just like what we did with the GP38-2, uh, you know, because it's got the numbers shifted forward to make the space for the cab vent because it looks like the GP40-2s, the cab vents were at the rear. And some of the pictures, just, just to clarify, or to my disclaimer, it doesn't look like all of the GP40-2s had the cab vent. Uh, only some did, so I'm not too sure about that. Uh, the research continues, and there'll be more in the future on that. So once I shifted the numbers forward, had that little space, kind of looked odd. Again, had to have something there to represent the cab vent, so I just took a piece of... Uh, uh, a locomotive shell. It was actually the winterization hatch from the uh, SD60s that I took offline and uh, just cut that up into a little sliver, glued it in there, weathered it up and looked perfect. So when it came to the paint on this project, this one was a little different than the way I did it in the past because I had to get those white stripes off the side and then some of the paint started to fall apart and so I was just like, okay, had to strip the whole thing. I didn't really want to get into painting the whole uh, handrail assembly, but I ended up having to do that. So as I was painting it, um, it kind of came to the, the question, is black running boards or not? Uh, there is some pictures out there floating of um, units that look up here that their running boards are blue. A lot of modelers don't paint the running boards black. They just leave them the standard Conrail blue. So right around the time I was getting into that portion of the painting, there was actually a post that night on Conrail uh, Modelers on Facebook and uh, Ed Kapazinski uh, commented, somebody was asking if they should paint the running boards blue or not. There was a gentleman on, I just, I'm just looking for the post, I can't find it anymore, uh, so it'll take too long. Um, the, there was a gentleman who commented who apparently worked at one of the Conrail uh, engineering departments for the locomotives and he said that, and I quote, uh, all Conrail running boards were supposed to be black. 
A lot of times they didn't paint them. They may have just rolled them on, but they were all supposed to be black up until I believe he said 1990. And then after that, that's when they had to have the non-skid material, the non-slip type paint, and they also started putting the black on the nose. So uh, with that information in hand, um, he also then ventured to say is, you know, to be certain though, however, look at prototype photos. So the, the unit that you're model, look at the photos and just go with the photos because there was apparently some that were getting rolled out without the black running boards like they were supposed to. So that kind of answered my question. Uh, I looked at the photos I had and they were very uh, apparent that they were black. So I went ahead and hand painted. I hand painted the, the running boards and the, 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 uh, the ladders and all the uh, associated work on that and just left the, the um, anti-climber blue and the handrails blue. So yeah, I, I just want to pass that information on because I think it's kind of uh, good information to have as a Conrail model or just to know that yeah, the running boards are supposed to be black by Conrail's painting rules. Then other than that, you know, the, the, it was just pretty much a straightforward project. Uh, I'm getting a little uh, better at the decals. And um, the thing that usually trips me up is the Conrail can opener because it's so large and long. You get that areas that want to kink or it doesn't want to lay down flat. So you just got to take your time and work over it. But I was using Microsoft to kind of flatten the decal down and get it to suck down. And, and it worked really good. However, I think I went a little too far because I started to get some paint peel. Uh, at the bottom of the decal. So just be aware of that when you're working with those decals. The Microsoft will break down the paint and keep that and just remember that. All right, so I think that's going to put a wrap on this project. Uh, yeah, so we added another good uh, sound locomotive to the fleet. Uh, upcoming locomotive shop projects. Um, next month, we're going to be doing an SD35. I had an, old, an SD35 that's been with me a long, long time. And I'm just tired of looking at it. Uh, I want to get it weathered up. So uh, we're going to do that next month. It's going to be a quick project. No sound, it already has a decoder in it, so we're just going to concentrate on the weathering. And then after that, we're going to delve back into uh, GP38-2s. So i got two more and made the determination they're just going to be straight DCC. No sound because I don't have any sound boards. And uh, I think I, I definitely have something special for one of them. And uh, the other one's just going to be a straight Conrail blue. All right, so that's going to put a wrap on this episode. So if you've seen this video for the first time and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel because we'd love to have you following along and hit the bell for the notifications. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for our daily updates on the layout. And otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on The Locomotive Shop. Bye.